Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, quick mail here. It says, Hello, Perch P. Perchington, the fourth. The fourth. All right, I'm aging. I'm aging in real time. It used to be the third lot. I, uh, the third is more fun to say than the fourth, isn't it? I, I think, I, I don't know. Ah, fuck it. Anyway, back to uh, Perch, Perch, Perchington, the fourth. Uh, you talk a lot about comic books and how a lot of the writers and storylines are doing it wrong most specifically around continuity and respecting the character. Well, you've read a lot of X-Men comics. My question is, how would you write Wolverine? Wolverine is an interesting character for Marvel. He's a character that has been done a lot of different ways, and, and most of the time, the writers go back to the same formula with Wolverine. The recent series by Saladin Ahmed has Wolverine running around the forests of Canada playing with the wolves while simultaneously being an old gay woman. <laughs> Sorry. While simultaneously being an old gay woman on Rogue's X-Men team. How would you... I'm not sure what that means, but okay. Uh, <laughs> fair enough. Um, it's an old gay woman on Rogue's team. I would love it if Marvel marketed that way. I'm the best at what I do, and what I do is be an old gay woman. On Rogue's team. I, I don't know. It's just funny. Anyway. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, how would you, like, how would you, okay, how would you write, out, oh, okay, how would you write Wolverine if you were writing for Marvel? Okay. I skipped a couple pieces there, but that's okay. We got the idea. All right. How would I write Wolverine? Well, uh, full disclosure, you know, I've read all the X-Men comics. I don't think Wolverine was ever my favorite character. I like the character, don't get me wrong, um, but in terms of like the other characters in the X-Men, there are a lot of more interesting characters in Wolverine. I think Chris Claremont understand, uh, I understood, at least at some level, that Wolverine was a great foil for other characters. He was an A-list character, but he was often used best when promoting up others. It's kind of like, um, and you know what? I, oh, I found a good way to use this analogy. Uh, I was going to do a wrestling analogy, and the wrestler I was thinking of had a really bad ending uh, where he basically killed his family and hung himself. So I won't use that wrestler. I'm going to use a different one. Uh, so Wolverine, to me, is a little bit like Eddie Guerrero in the sense that Eddie put on great matches. He was a superstar. He did absolutely tremendous things. He was a, he was a huge, huge draw. But one of the things he did better than nearly anyone is he'd make other people look good. So Chris Jericho early in his career was fairly limited uh, as a wrestler. And, you know, wrestling Eddie Guerrero, Eddie not only made himself look good, but he was able to make his opponent look good. And to me, that's a little bit about what... <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, sorry. Sorry for the sneeze. I should go edit that out. I won't, but I should. Um, Eddie Guerrero uh, is like the Wolverine of Marvel to me. Now, if you're a wrestling fan, maybe that means something and you agree or disagree, but whatever. I was going to say Chris Benoit, but, you know, I mean, yeah. Uh, but enough said. Um, so how would I write Wolverine? Um, again, I still like the character. Not my favorite X-Men, X -Man, uh, but I do like the character. So, first of all, what I would not do, and I, I can say this relatively quickly, I would absolutely not send him back to Canada to run around naked with the wolves. I, I just, I, there's nothing, it's, it's reductive, it's stupid, it doesn't make any sense. There's not a world where Wolverine's like, mutants have been treated bad, so I'm just going to hide out in Canada with the wolves and run around naked. That doesn't make any sense for the character at all. It's just stupid. So I, I definitely wouldn't do that story. I think that's, that's going to do nothing but not. So I've, the problem is, even if you get readers who do not have the history with Wolverine, they're going to pick up this comic like, what the fuck is this guy? Like, he's supposedly one of the most badass. He's been an Avenger. He's been a, like, world-renowned hero and everything else. And he's he's running around naked with the wolves because he's tired of society. Like, this doesn't make any sense as a story. It just doesn't. I'm sorry. Um, new readers, old readers, none of it. So what I would do, though, is I would basically... I, one thing I would try and do is, is reclaim a lot of the different versions of his past. So Chris Claremont had him be kind of a, a spy-like character when he was Patch. Uh, he's been an Avenger. 
He's um, led a school in Jason Aaron's run. And so Wolverine has basically, if, if I'm looking at his broader kind of character arc, he was a kind of a, a rebel. He lost his memory. He was floating through life. He had kind of rage. He, you know, his powers were based on killing. At the end of the day, he's got metal spikes that come out of his hands. So he's got to not only murder people. I mean, his, his power doesn't subdue. His power kills. And kills usually close up with a lot of blood. So at the end of the day, he's rooted in violence. But he got his memories back. He's kind of been through a lot. He's tried to be a teacher at a school. He's tried to be an international man of mystery, James Bond-like character. He's tried to go legit as an Avenger. He's certainly rough around the edges, but he's also old. He's lived, you know, hundreds of years at this point, or more than 100 years. And he's wise. And so the, the pip... Sorry, the pivotal story for me is the Chris Claremont, Alan Davis, X-Men annual. And I, I think it's, I'm, I'm going to guess the number. I don't think it's right. Um, but it's it's an annual from the late 80s. And in it, you know, the X-Men go up against a brand new villain and they go into kind of some, some level of dreamscape. And Wolverine pulls himself out of it. And in it, um, we basically, the, the comic starts with drunken Wolverine coming back to the mansion. It ends with Wolverine, kind of the samurai, embracing his inner peace. And I would try and take that, kind of that conclusion or the the arc that went on in, in that annual. That was a brilliantly written annual, by the way, because it basically encapsulated Wolverine's journey from out-of-control savage into at-peace samurai, who has a deeper responsibility to those around him in one comic. A lot of people miss that subtext but in the in the comic it basically is encapsulation of wolverine's life and his struggle to you know belong and find his way and be at peace that's ultimately what that was and and so if you look at that comic and you kind of really play it out um that's the wolverine i would try and adapt right now wolverine as a teacher wolverine as a wise mentor wolverine as somebody who can get his hands dirty does get his hands dirty and so as a solo comic, what I would try and do is have Wolverine, who at this point, with his age and everything else he's seen and done and all the people he's fought, and the fact that he's basically got a forever cheat code and that he, he really can't be killed. We've seen him reduced down to a metal skeleton and he can still regrow. So he can make mistakes without consequences to some extent. He understands the responsibility of that. And I would have Wolverine basically kind of in this environment I would ha I would pay homage to his uh, days as Patch. I would have him not as a secret agent exactly, but as somebody who's who's going in trying to solve bigger problems that kind of, you know, that you could have the hand or the fist. You know, I'm going to come in and I've got the experience of, of my wisdom and the inner peace of a samurai. I can, I can, uh, we, we can talk this out. We can stand down, but invariably, you know, villains are crazy. And if, if we're going to go down that path, I know I can kill you very quickly. So I would try and portray Wolverine as an extremely dangerous superhero. He's somebody who is, you know, willing to kind of de-escalate, willing, like, I'm coming in and I'm going to solve this problem and we can do it kind of literally the easy way or the hard way. I would give him the confidence that we've seen in previous Wolverine comics and X-Men comics to say, I, I know I can solve this problem. I've got the, you know, the, the power set. I've got the... You know, the, the weapons at my disposal, I have friends. I mean, at this point, I know everyone in the Marvel Universe, so if the situation gets too bad, I can call the Fantastic Four or the Avengers or Cap or Iron Man or the X-Men or the Silver Surfer. Fuck it, I can. I know everyone. So I'm really the most dangerous person in the Marvel Universe, so I'm coming in like I would do a comic where he goes up against the Serpent Society or he goes up against a kind of a new version of the Marauders, maybe... You know, Sinister is trying to rebuild kind of his his old clan, or maybe somebody who's stumbled across Sinister's notes is trying to make a, you know, a a half-assed hacky version of the Marauders that is uh, more dangerous, more explosive because they're just not fully baked. And so Wolverine's got to come in to fix this, and he's basically like, "Look, um, I'm approaching this situation. I wouldn't have, by the way, I'm I'm saying this out loud. I wouldn't have like Wolverine saying this out loud." 
But I basically, when Wolverine entered the scene, it would be basically as the most dangerous man in the entire Marvel Universe. I'm somebody who's coming in, and no matter how this goes, like, I can rip you all to pieces with my claws. I can, you can, you could completely annihilate me with bullets. I'm still going to stand up and survive because you can't stop me. Um, or, you know, we can, or, you know, I, I, you, you know, if you, if you, if you think you can overpower me or do a lot of collateral damage, I can bring literally every superhero in the Marvel universe to this location and we can fuck you up real good. I would have Wolverine be a, a grim, stoic samurai like character who's going to go into the world's most absolute dangerous situations with some of the biggest villains i mean one of the ways you could do this is you know the people are like ah you know we can't do anything about dr doom he's got that you know diplomatic immunity over there in latvernia and wolverine's like you know what i'm tired of fucking around with dr doom i'm gonna go solve doc I, i would send wolverine at the biggest threats marvel has to offer and it would be like look you can't kill me i'm older than you. I've seen more than you. I have the entire kind of weight of the Marvel universe at my back if I want it. And I like, like, let's, let's go, let's throw it out and put Wolverine in incredibly dangerous situations. I would build up to it. I would give him a couple runs where, you know, he's, you know, it's like, it's the wrecking crew and the wrecking crew get them, get their hands on an infinity stone and they're really, you know, fucking everything up. And Wolverine has to go in there and it's like, uh, but you need to portray him not as just a berserker savage, but as somebody who's truly earned everything that he's done. It would be a very delicate balance. It would take a really good writer. Uh, but what you need to do is have Wolverine. Yeah, you know, it, it's reductive to have Wolverine show up. It's like, ah, I'm going to smoke this cigar. And I'm like, yeah, I'm the best at what I do. It's cool. It was fun when Claremont did it. But now you should take another step to go, you know, I'm truly the best there is at any situation at this point. Yes, you know, other superheroes can kind of move mountains. The Hulk can throw things at you. Storm could, you know, create a typhoon in your backyard, whatever. Like, they can do all those things. Those are fancy powers. Me, I've I've been through this scenario already 40 times in my life. And I've won 39 of those times. And I'm willing to get up close and literally carve the flesh off your body if i need to like how how is this gonna go you know you you want to write him as a samurai mixed with dirty harry to some extent of you know like i'm gonna solve problems i was sitting with dr doom like you know what we we've been fucking around with this asshole for too long i'm taking care of it that's that you know you, you but keep in mind i'm describing this to you i wouldn't have wolverine like show up and be cocky i wouldn't have him just like uh, mouth off. You don't want to, don't make him Deadpool. Just take an approach of, you know what? In the Marvel Universe, this may be the guy with the most experience of anyone. He's still gruff. He still, you know, is willing to get his hands dirty. But you're not messing around with just some kind of savage run around naked in the Canadian wilds. You're dealing with somebody who has literally done fucking everything and and can handle any situation and and write it a little bit from that perspective that's probably what i would do all right i feel like this take is going to be highly controversial in the comments so let me know what you think in the comments below like and subscribe of course and thanks for listening